Hey, seventh graders, the next unit's going to be a pretty depressing unit, but it's something that you should have some background knowledge on before you go to high school and probably learn about again, and that is the Holocaust. Uh, so we learned about the World Wars, and you learned yesterday what anti-Semitism is. Now you're, we're just going to be learning about the events of the Holocaust, why it happened, and yeah. So a lot of you probably just have some base knowledge on the Holocaust, even before yesterday, that Hitler... And the Nazis targeted the millions and millions of Jews living in Europe during World War II, and their goal was to kill all of them. So uh, the two topics you're going to learn about today is just like some of the earliest things the Nazis did before the concentration camps really started. And the first one is the Nuremberg Laws. Um, these were laws that were passed in 1935. It the primary thing they did is marriage between Jews and Germans could not happen. Think about it in our country. You can marry whoever you want. Um, and the Nazis took this right away from Germans and Jews and Jews couldn't work in a number of professions anymore. Like, uh, Jews could not be doctors. They couldn't be teachers. They couldn't be a lot of, um, like more college educated kind of jobs. Um, this is a chart, everybody, unless you read German, this is a chart telling who is considered Jewish or not, um, Jewish is, or excuse me, Jude is the German word for Jew. So you can see everybody like a pure German. Um, they usually traced ancestry back to great grandparents. So as long as your no great grandparents were Jewish, you are a full blooded German. Um, an Aryan is what the Nazis called it. Um, you were still considered German if you had one Jewish grandparent, because as you can see by the chart over time, um, it be, you become less and less Jewish. And then there was what was called Mishlinga, where you might, you you would have two Jewish grandparents, but from like two, your two separate great grandparents. Um, and Mishlinga, they weren't like put in concentration camps, but they weren't seen as like full blooded Aryan Germans. And then of course you had Jews where if you had two blood great grandparents who were Jews or great or grandparents or parents, whoever it may be, you were Jewish um, and you'd be targeted through these laws. And whenever they couldn't trace ancestry back, they did various tests like measuring the nose here um, to determine if somebody had Jewish blood in them. This is a picture of a German woman being shamed for marrying a Jewish man here. Um, another thing the Nuremberg Laws did is they encouraged people to not buy from Jewish businesses. And then we come to Kristallnacht, where things got violent. Kristallnacht is the German word for a night of broken glass. Uh, this was uh, November 1938, so about a year before World War II started. Over 7,000 Jewish-owned stores, buildings, and synagogues were destroyed or vandalized. 91 people were killed and over 30,000 Jewish men were arrested and sent to concentration camps. And you think everybody vandalizing, destroying Jewish or any property would get you sent to jail, but nothing happened to the people that participated in this that did all this damage and whatnot. Buildings being burned and nothing was being done about it. Jude being vandalized, being labeled a Jewish business. So some pretty ugly stuff, everybody. So now what I'd like you to do is just watch this daily life. It talks about what daily life was like for Jews living in Germany. And also talk. you'll hear firsthand accounts of people who experience Kristallnacht. These two videos right here are optional if you want to learn a little bit more about these. And please just answer the discussion questions then. So thanks and have a great day, guys.